Good day, my friends and fellow citizens. In the midst of unprecedented political troubles, we have cause of great gratitude to God for multitudes of benefits as well. Unusual good health and most abundant harvests from the past season and in the peculiar exigencies of the times, our intercourse with foreign nations has been attended with profound solicitude. On that note, we are recently informed that on the 14th of December last, Albert, Prince Consort and husband of Queen Victoria, suddenly passed away at the age of 42. Flags in New York City are flying at half-mast, and the sympathy of the entire country to the Queen and the British royal family is hereby extended. A formal letter of condolence will be issued early in February. Mrs. Lincoln and I are also appreciative of the inquiries made after her health. She has been only slightly unwell of late and was unable to attend the White House reception last week. It is expected that she will make her regular appearance, however, on Tuesday next. Both Willie and Ted have been enjoying the rather mild winter weather, riding their ponies out on the White House lawns and uh, hoping for snow. Willie is actually a little unwell himself at the moment, but should soon recover and has been enjoying himself indoors the past several days with reading. I think he and his brother nearly wore themselves out on January 1st in the reception here. New Year's Day brought many visitors to the People's House, which has actually been recently refurbished. Mrs. Lincoln is anticipating its formal opening on February 5th. Also, attending the year now drawn to a close was the occasion of the President's annual message to Congress. Much of what was painfully uncertain only a year ago is better defined and more distinct now. And the progress of events is plainly in the right direction. The whole exception, perhaps, is in regard to the financial straits of the country. The Secretary of the Treasury has presented a new plan for addressing the financial state in which the country now finds itself in large part because of the rebellion. The funding necessary for prosecution of the war has, but without intent, introduced some state of difficulty into the banking classes on Wall Street, and it has been announced by many financiers there and throughout the country that specie payments, coin, will henceforth be suspended. This suspension has caused much concern. My friends, I believe no duty is more imperative on government than the duty it owes its people of furnishing them a sound and uniform currency. Capital has its rights which are as worthy of protection as any other rights, to secure to each laborer the whole product of his labor, or as nearly as possible, is a most worthy object of any good government. Therefore, an emergency legal tender bill has formally reported to the House by the Ways and Means Committee. This measure will, in the words of its sponsor, New York Congressman Eldridge Spaulding, prevent speculation by brokers, bankers, and others in government securities, and particularly any scheme which should double the public debt of the country and double the expenses of the war by damaging the credit of the government. Congress will be debating this issue over the coming month and should be voting on it soon. Also, and to the same end, an increase in taxation upon foreign imports, a renewal of the tariff, will be gradually reintroduced. It is believed that this will surely eventuate in the restoration of American industry and return hopeful employment to the American laboring classes by decreasing competition with the lower wage standards of workers across the ocean. Finally, and with like purpose, a proposal 
has been made of certain internal improvements to the whole country, a railroad to the west and into the Middle South. It is believed that these proposed elements will in fact lead to a speedy recovery of economic interests and a restoration of specie payments throughout the country. Early this month, I attended a lecture at the Smithsonian Institute by Horace Greeley, editor of the New York Tribune. His stated belief that slavery and its abolition is the sole purpose of the war is certainly as creditable as it is well known, however much it may disagree with the procedures of this administration. In considering the policy to be adopted for suppressing this insurrection, I have been anxious and careful that the inevitable conflict for that purpose should not degenerate into a violent and remorseless revolutionary struggle. I have therefore in every case thought it proper to keep the integrity of the Union prominent as the primary object of the contest. That same day, representatives from the Congressional Committee on the Conduct of the War presented their own discontent with said policy and their demand for the removal of General-in-Chief McClellan. On the first point, it is well known that there has been much division and bad feeling in the legislative department over the issues of slavery, abolition and the propriety of the late Confiscation Act. May I simply say that the authority of said act is based upon the well-known and unquestioned law of nations, permitting the capture of insurgent properties being used for purposes of warfare. However, here in the national capital, the numbers of dislocated people, still technically considered as property in the eyes of the law, has swollen beyond imagination. Well above any practical consideration of whether or not they have actually been used against the government. Slave owners residing in rebellious states and their agents here continue to seek redress and return of their lost property and runaway slaves in ever larger numbers to the detriment of the actual prosecution of the war itself. National authority over the District of Columbia is unquestioned. It is therefore directed that arrests of fugitive slaves by the Army of the Potomac in the district shall henceforward cease. However, in loyal states where slavery is constitutionally protected, the situation is different. The growing propensity of border state slaves to run away and the resulting property lost to loyal owners must be addressed and may be alleviated by means of some form of official compensation. Those slaves then to be at once deemed free. It is therefore now recommended to Congress that such a plan for general compensation be considered to loyal slave owners in the border states. And in specific, a plan of this nature has already been proposed to the loyal slave state of Delaware and will shortly be considered by the state legislature. On the second point, there seems to be much general discontent with the progress of our arms and more particularly with the leadership of General McClellan. It has been said that one bad general is better than two good ones. And the saying is true if taken to mean no more than that an army is better directed by a single mind, though perhaps inferior, then by two superior ones at variance or cross purposes with one another. So I wish to make plain with both emphasis and candor that the necessary confidence of the administration in general in Chief McClellan 
remains. Movement of troops will be made very soon in accordance with that confidence. And the credit of the people in the armies and navies of the United States has every reason to be sustained and renewed. I'm also pleased to note that General McClellan has recovered from his recent bout with typhoid fever. And finally, my friends, it is well known that over the course of the past month, Secretary of War Cameron has taken a position as Minister to Russia, a position of importance, I might add, in the current curious balance of European sympathies toward American interests, and it is expected that his able service in behalf of the Union will soon be felt in the court of Tsar Alexander II, which is, in fact, of critical importance in Europe at the present, especially in light of our <clears throat> recent difficulties with Great Britain. Edwin McMaster Stanton, former Attorney General of the United States under the previous administration, has accepted the position in his stead. The appointment of Secretary Stanton is confirmed by the Senate on the 15th of January, and it is expected that the new Secretary will work in close concert with General-in-Chief McClellan. My friends, the struggle of today is not altogether for today, but for the vast future also. With reliance on providence, all the more firm and earnest, let us proceed to the great task ahead, which events have devolved upon us. Thank you.